something happened at 02468. What happened? 3711, 9, and 3. So in the previous examples, we were asked to integrate something like this. And we did it using numerical integration. The answer was actually approximately, and then we would write down this. So this is where equal sign comes in. So for you to understand, that's the continuation. Integral is approximately this. And then it's 0 0.44, 14, 19, 0, 10, whatever it is. So we learn how to rewrite integral in terms of some points, data points, and functions. What if the function is not given as the integral, which means the function is not given as expression? This is expression. What if the function also not given as the graph? So there are several ways for you to have information presented as the function f of x, y equals f of x, as the graph, and you see the connection here, input and output, and as a table, table. So table also connects inputs and outputs, and you don't know the rule behind this table. Was it quadratic? Was it sine and cosine? You don't know. So the question is still the same. Let's approximate. Well, let's call it data or data. That's kind of what you should know what data scientists are doing. Let's approximate, approximate what? Integral of f of x dx, we don't even know the function uh, as an expression. We know the function from these only five data points, which means for you to understand, there is a graph and you can draw it using dots. At zero, it was three, at two, it was seven, at four, it was 11, at six, it was nine, and then at eight, it was three, and that's why we teach so hard how to graph functions in school, because this is exactly what data science looks like, and statistics and collection of data in general. So this is what we have here, just five dots, which is very not enough. They ask us to find integral from what to what? What do you think? Zero to eight. So they want us to find this height, but isn't it weird, those are just lines. No, they want us to fill in the gaps. That's kind of what is going on here. So that's also a common job of statistician or data scientist is to fill in the missing data. Uh, if some data got lost on the way or some data was not recorded, yes, there's a lots of methods, usually numerical methods, how to fill in the gaps. So let's integrate from zero to eight, from zero to eight. So this is your A is zero and this is your B, eight, like so. Then you choose the method. For example, we are said using left end points using Right in points, we're going to do trapezoidal rule. Trapezoidal rule. And then we need to figure out many things by ourselves this time. So we're still looking for the area under the curve. We just don't have the curve. We don't have the function. So let's see, solution. First of all, what is your N? What do you think? Number of intervals. Four, how do you know? Yes, that's what you said, because it's five endpoints. Or let's just count from zero to two, from two to four, from four to six, from six to eight. Four intervals. So you see, they don't have to give it to you. You could jump over if you want. One, two. But then you're missing, you're making even less data points to be available for you. So n equals four. What is your a? Zero. And b? Eight. That's given. Delta x has a formula b minus a over n, which is 8 minus 0, 8 over 4, which is 2. So that's my step size. But did we know the step size without this formula? That's a pretty cool thing. From 0 to 2, it's 2 from 2 to 4, it's 2 from 4 to 6, it's 2. So actually, you can just check that it is 2. But it was given there with the data points. But again, if you skip over two or three data points, then the step size will be bigger, four or six. Finally, it's up to you to know the formula T sub n, which is T sub four, equals delta x. Now let's just write it down. Delta x is two over two. That's your formula, bless you. Delta x is two. And then you have a pattern, one, two, 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 
two, two, one. But that's way too many. So you need to know how many we have. We have five points. So one, two, three, four, five, like so. That's how you know. That's how you fix it. So one times f of x sub zero. And this is how fast it goes. Before, and in your homework, you have to actually plug the numbers into the graph of, into the expression of the function and calculate them approximately. That's so much work. Here, data is given. One times what? Times what? Three. So should I write it down or not? F at zero plus two. F at two plus two. F at four plus two. F at six plus one. F at eight. This is what we're talking about. Then let me put delta x. And now look how simple it is. It's going to be two over two. 1 times f of 0, and I'm just writing the second row of the table. 3 plus 2 times 7 plus 2 times 11 plus 2 times 9 plus 1 times 3. Boom, and the answer is exactly 60. That means the approximation we have is 60. So, this integral answer... Integral from 0 to 8, f of x, which is given in terms in form of the data or table, is approximately 60. That is the answer. That's how you're using the given data to approximate functions, uh, area below functions, i.a. integrals. That's a pretty cool idea how much data, data can give us. So that means... Totally, I same idea we, which I teach when we show concave up, concave down situations in calculus. One, I show them the graph. Let's see if I can find quickly. I show the graph of applications. Uh, can I show the graph of the COVID data concavity? So what we did right now was maybe maximum minimum. Let's see. Yeah. Mm, more or less. Well, this is what I'm showing. So the data was collected per day. Per day we had numbers of patients and it's going down, blah, 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 something like this. We don't have a curve, actually. So the curve is made up later but we first collect the data points and they look exactly like so so the integral tells me the well the integral tells me the number of patients at all if today there were 300 and tomorrow there were 600 and then there were 700 and so on what is the total integration is summary or addition it's a smart way to add things that's why sigma notation is in the definition of the integral, because those are sigma sums. So we have data points, we're collecting them, that's integral. Well, how to figure out that integral? You can use numerical integration to do that.